Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here a pen on loan uh, from a good friend, John Hall, at Right Here Pens in Shrewsbury in the UK. And as you can see here, it is an Opus 88. So John was very kind to, to loan me this pen for review, and I thought I would show this off to you today. Uh, this pen comes in a standard box uh, from Opus 88, comes in this sleeve, so let me remove the sleeve and you will see here the standard Opus 88 box, fine writing instruments since 1977. Now, although this brand has not been in existence as Opus 88 since 1977, they have been making pens for other companies, hence the 1977 there. So, the box here is a little bit of a sort of like a, a plasticky box uh, with a like a faux leather type um, effect going on here. So, let me open the box. And you'll see in here, it is the Opus 88 Omar. And you get here an Opus 88 booklet. You'll see here that it gives an indication on how to unscrew the cap, unscrew the body. It is an eyedropper pen, like uh, all of the Opus 88s. I don't think they actually do a pen that isn't an eyedropper. And I have a number of these Opus 88 pens. So you can see here, eyedropper system. And then you have it in, I think it's Taiwanese probably, because it's a Taiwan company. So let's get down to the pen. So the pen here, as I said, it's an eyedropper pen. So the first thing you get is an eyedropper. And this is what you use to fill the pen. And if I take the pen out of the box and move the box away, you'll see here the pen. Now, the pen is actually quite an oversized pen. So let me just go into some of the detail here. So to start with, the pen, uh, the cap here, you'll see the finial. And the finial is, at, finial is actually a white dome with a chrome cap band going on there. And then it comes down to the clip, which says Opus 88. And it is effectively a Thai clip, uh, again, in chrome. The material of the pen is actually quite nice. It's this very much like cracked ice, almost like seashell type effect going on here. And you can see this here on the pen itself is actually quite remarkable and then the cap starts to taper down a little bit to where normally there would be a cap band and there isn't one here and then it starts to taper back out again to the center part of the body and then taper back in to what is this blind cap or uh, and I'll show you this in a little bit, but this is the stopper valve or shut off valve so let me unscrew the pen here and you can see so this has a Yovo that's a broad nib going on there and if you look in terms of the size on my hand the pen is actually quite a lovely size it actually fits quite nicely in the, the crook of my hand here the, the section feels quite comfortable to actually hold. It does flare out a little bit here in terms of the section. And I prefer that actually in my pens because that way then my fingers or thumb do not actually slip onto the nib and feed and then become quite inky. Now, there are some threads here. Now, these threads are... A little bit on the sharp side I would say they are not quite as smooth as I would like however they don't bother me because my fingers are actually nowhere near the threads if you hold your pen further up though then that might be a problem with you that you might actually have is that they do feel a little bit more on the sharp side 
compared to threads on, on other pens. Now, can you post this pen? Yes, you can. Would you want to? I think I'll leave that decision up to you. I think it becomes a bit of a wand, uh, and it does feel a little bit more back weighted at that point because of the weight in the cap. And it and you can see here, it doesn't quite post as securely. Like you can move that cap around a little bit. So, like it's not a pen that personally I would want to post. But if you really have to post your 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 caps, if you find that you there are people that that post them because they want a longer pen or a weightier pen there are people that post them because they don't want to lose the cap so it really depends on on your reason for posting but to be honest i wouldn't find the need to to post uh, that cap at all now i did mention it's an eyedropper filling system so let me show you this and what you do here is you unscrew the section. Now, you will see here that there is an O-ring. And that O-ring is just to stop ink leaking out, just in case. And there you have it. That's the nib and feed in there. And then you have the eyedropper system here. And it looks like it has a plunger in there. And it does. But it's not a regular sort of piston or power vac plunger. So you unscrew this here. And once unscrewed, you can see here that if, I, if I'm if i screwing it down, that piston here is actually moving slightly. And then what you can do, once unscrewed, you can pull it out. And that just allows you to eyedropper the pen more if you want to. If you wanted to unscrew it here, then that will actually give you a little bit more ink flow than normal. If you screw this piston knob all the way down, at that point it locks off the ink against the section and should stop ink flowing. Now I've had mixed results with this on my Opus 88 Calaro demonstrators where I tend to find that it does reduce the ink almost to a dribble. However, if your pen gets shaken around a little bit, then it will still let ink through. Uh, but for me, it's still a pretty good lock-off system. Would I want to use it with flying? That amount of ink in an eyedropper? Probably not. Uh, but I know there are a lot of people that will fly regularly, probably every day or every other day uh, on business. So uh, in, in that sense, you want you won't be at home filling up or being able to fill up your your pens that often and you want to have a lot of ink with you so so i i definitely get that um and i think with this shut off valve uh, that certainly helps in having an inky mess when flying at high altitudes either increasing in height or um, uh, reducing in height when coming down which it tends to be the i think the biggest issue um, with pens leaking. So before I actually do a writing sample and ink this up, let me do a size and weight check, a comparison with other pens, and I'll also show you this material a little bit better. And this material is really quite nice. It's very much like a cracked ice, almost seashell type approach going on there, along with the amber clear or brown uh, body here. Now this comes in a number of colours at the moment. It comes in this amber or brown colour. It comes in a grey, a green and a purple. Now these retail for around about £110 in the UK right here on their website. If you want one of these you certainly go off and, and buy it from right here. Right here provided this sample for review. So let me do a size check here on this pen. So the size of the pen, we're looking at 150 millimeters in length and 65 millimeters for the cap. In terms of the body, let's have a look at this. We are looking at around 138 millimeters in in length so that is quite a, a long pen and i do actually like it now in terms of the weight now this isn't inked up 
So we're looking at just under 34 grams. So if you had this inked up, this is going to hold a couple of milliliters of ink. So you're going to be looking at around about 36 grams. The body is just under 17.6 grams. And then the cap, we're looking at just under 16 and a half grams. So that, to be honest, isn't a bad weight for the pen. So I think let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have the Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden. We have a Jinhao X450. We have a Pen BBS. We have the Opus 88 Calaro, the clear demonstrator. We have the Opus 88 Omar. We have an Edison Pens Collier. We have a Penida Le Grande Bellezza. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana. We have a Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shining Lines Dove. And we have a Scribo Feel. So let's ink this pen up. Now, I am going to use an ink syringe. I'm not actually going to use the eyedropper because I find an ink syringe is actually a little bit easier to be able to dribble in so I am just going to suck up a bit of ink here and I will open the pen and I'm going to loosen this valve here so this valve I, I tend to loosen it because it allows me to get the syringe needle or the eyedropper in a little bit more and, and I can actually stick this needle right down inside I don't know if you can see this here but I can actually stick it right down inside if I want to so I don't have to fill it at the top now I'm not going to put a huge amount of ink in here I'm just going to put a little bit of ink but you can see here probably the ink that is in there and I'm going to screw this back on Just make sure it's tied against that o-ring that is there and i'm going to leave this open because i don't actually want to lock off the valve so let's do a writing sample so i'm going to leave that shut off valve open and this is the opus 88 and it is the omar now I believe they've left the Calaro name off because the Calaro is now getting a little bit mixed up with some of the smaller demonstrators, the larger demonstrators. So this is just called the Omar. Now this actually has a broad uh, nib and it's a steel nib. Now the ink in here, as I showed you, is Robert Oster or Oster and it's Cafe. Crema. And this is an ink that I really do love a lot, and I think really it matches really well for this pen. Now, in terms of uh, the line variation, it's a broad steel nib, so you are going to get a broad line here. If I try to push it a little bit more, you get a little bit of a line more out of it, but not a lot because it is a broad nib, it is a steel nib. But you can see here that it's actually quite a nice writer. There's no hard starts, no skips, and it's actually quite a pleasant writer. Uh, the one it, This has a Yovo nib on it. Although it's branded Opus 88, it is a Yovo nib. And I do actually like the Yovo nibs. I find they're very smooth, uh, very consistent uh, across the entire nib range. So this is a nib that I do like. Uh, and this is why I go for a lot of Yovo nibs. So in terms of wetness here, let's have a look at this. You can see here that is quite a wet pen. This is an A4 pad and it's effectively getting halfway across the pad. So this is quite wet and 
this ink here is still drying it's still wet so for me this is why i like the yovo broad nibs because they really are a lovely nib they are usually they have a lot of ink flow to them and that helps with the smoothness on these nibs and i do like broad nibs as well so for me this is a really good writer and i really am thinking of picking some of these up myself um I like this brown one. Uh, I think I like the grey one as well, and uh, I, I think in in it's going to be a difficult decision uh, depending on which one I, I pick up. Uh, now the shut off valve here, like I can show you here if I twist that off and lock it down, there is going to be ink left in the feed and the the channel here so it is still going to write and it's going to write quite wet now because i've pushed ink through so you're going to get this uh almost like because you're pushing ink through so this is actually going to write for some time so it's not going to lock off immediately but uh you can see here it's not running dry so uh, it will probably take about a page in my sort of uh, testing in the past with these lock off valves before it will actually dry up but it will eventually dry up and start sort of drying out but you can still hear see here it, this is why sort of i i tend not to rely on these lock off valves too much because you will find that even though you've locked off the supply there is still a good amount of ink left in not only the the feed the nib channel but also in the section here so it's still going to keep pulling on that ink until it eventually runs dry so for me i found that it normally takes around about a page so if you're going to fly with this you're, and, and you lock off the valve, then you are still going to find that there is going to be uh, ink in the system, ink that can leak out into the cap. And this is going to be the same with all eyedroppers that have a lock off valve on it. But uh, for me, um, I, I think it adds for the extra safety there that you have that mechanism if you if you are flying regularly and you want to be able to shut that ink off so you don't get a massive leak of two milliliters of ink because this pen will hold around two milliliters of ink. The pen is actually a really good writer. There's really nothing that I do not like about this pen. Um, I, I think the pros are it's uh, around about a hundred pound, a hundred and ten pound. Uh, the the finish is is a really nice finish. I I really cannot actually find any downside about this pen whatsoever. It has a Yovo nib. Yovo nibs I like, and it's for me a perfect writer. Does it have a lot of flex on the nib? No, it doesn't because it's a steel nib. So you are not going to get a lot of line variation out of these nibs but you will find that it is a consistent workhorse writer. So if you want one of these, you can pick this up from John Hall at Right Here Pens in Shrewsbury. He's at writeherepens.co.uk. You can either order online or you can call John or uh, his team up and buy over the phone. Uh, if you do, tell him that I sent you and that will be great to, to help support this channel. So thanks for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.